Hey everyone, Brian here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to steam milk on the uh, Decent D one, or just in general. Uh, basically, the reason why I'm making this video is because I think people, new DE1 owners, are having a little bit of a challenge steaming milk. There has been a lot of interesting posts I've been seeing on the Diaspora where people are saying like, hey, did our steam get downgraded or what's been going on there? Uh, and I feel like a lot of it can be mitigated with just better technique. And I'm not an expert at this, but I'll show you what works for me. So what I've done is I've pulled... Uh, two shots really, but I split them up and I've done it in clear cups. And there's a reason why we're doing it in clear cups like this. It might be a little bit challenging if you're new to pour in these types of cups rather than you know, a nice flat uh, based cup, or, I mean a, a curve based cup. But what we'll be able to see in this is how much uh, air are we adding to our milk when we actually pour in. Uh, it might be harder to do latte art, but it's a good learning experience. And what I've done is I have, what, I got four pitchers here. Uh, I'll show you this at the end. This is the S-Pro Torre 2, which will solve pretty much most of your problems uh, if you just don't want to deal with any sort of technique. But what I've done is I've got, uh, these are all filled with uh, eight ounces of whole milk. Or, or sorry, not eight, about six ounces of whole milk. And I got two Rattleware pitchers and then uh, my favorite WPM pitcher. I'll show you uh, what is too much air, too little air, and then I'll try to show you what is about the right amount of air. Uh, although that's totally dependent on what type of drink you're making. Really, at the end of the day, it's your steam wand placement. And you once you get that down, you're going to be able to steam anything. So the very first thing I want you guys to do is take the steam wand, okay? Move it out. Pull it all the way out like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right. Okay, like this. Just to the right. And then pull this out just a little. So now we're away from the drip tray. We're away from the group head handle. Although the group head handle will be helpful in supporting our left wrist. Uh, and this is my kind of experience in doing that. So the first example I'm going to show you is adding too much air. We're gonna do the we're gonna do the same exact steam on placement for everything. As you see, when I do it like this, I'm just resting my left wrist on here. I'm literally pushing up on here, and all I have to do is tilt the pitcher and raise up and down to change the amount of aeration I do, and. I'm going to show you too much air. So this is introducing way too much air. We're gonna, it's basically going to be like a huge foam layer. And I'll show you that right now. So that, so if we look at the, uh, the wand placement relative to the surface of the milk, there's going to be a lot of space, right? So I'm not touching the milk right now. Now I'm barely touching the milk. There's a lot of space. Watch this. Hear that? We're introducing air, and some of you guys might be aerating too long, and then you pull up like that. So this is gonna, you know, this might work if we steam a little bit longer. Uh, and you can actually sometimes save this amount of, uh, you know, this error with adding too much air at the beginning. But what we'll find out, hopefully, and I'm trying to demonstrate this, is that this milk is going to be really, really thick. This might actually work out for something like a cappuccino or something. But as you see, those bubbles there didn't incorporate at all, right? We see how uh, grainy, grainy that's been, or grainy that um, this milk looks, right? And you can tell, just looking at this, like we've added way too much air, right? And we can try to solve some of that by hitting it or maybe even swirling it like so. But look at how thick that milk is. And I'll show you what happens when you try to pour it pour into a uh, pour into a cup. So I'm not an expert at this, but you'll see, look how thick that is, right? We might be able to get some good latte art, but but the point is, is like, this is pretty thick milk. It, lo it still looks good, but if I set it down like so, and we go over here, we can see you know, hopefully, I, I I hope we can see this in the in the POV. But look how look at that layer of 
milk there. This isn't the worst you can do. And honestly, I don't think I'm the best at highlighting actual errors because I've gotten very used to how this machine works. But you can tell how thick that milk is. And what we're going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit. So by the end of the video, you might be able to see how big bubbles will start forming. Next, let me show you too thin milk. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with this. I'm going to pull out, tilt to the right, tilt to the side. Tap this just a little like that. So now we have space for everything, right? We're holding our pitcher the exact same direction here. All we have to do again is change the direction or change the height up and down of our a pitcher with the milk in it. So I'm gonna show you too little milk. I'm just gonna add just a little bit of air at the beginning and it's gonna be too thin. It's gonna get hot, but we're not gonna have good milk to pour latte art with. So I've just added just a little bit, right? We've added basically no air. We're getting a nice whirl, but this milk is gonna be way too thin for our latte art. It's gonna be very um, thin. It's going to be very, it's not going to have that jiggle like this. As we can see, maybe there, you're starting to see bigger bubbles form or uh, you can see the texture. As you see, I don't even need to touch anything here. I'm just using my right hand to feel for temperature and the machine is taking care of the rest. All that's happening is my pitcher placement. So now this is definitely getting hot enough. I'm gonna stop. So this is a great example of too thin milk and bad steaming or bad uh, tech aeration technique. Look at how watery this is. We see we have a layer of foam on the top, but look at how thin that is. Look at how how the milk kind of just. I don't know, it doesn't really stick, right? We want something that's kind of in between this and this uh, for most drinks or for like lattes, for example. So I can try to mitigate some of this by slamming the pitcher on the table, but that doesn't look so good. And I'll show you what happens when we pour in here. We can see there are big bubbles in here too because that was just how uh, bad we were when we were introducing air into, into, the, into the, uh, the pitcher when we were steaming. So watch this. This is gonna be a little bit harder to pour. So look at how fast that is, right? I can't, I can barely, I can't even get anything out of this. And we can see the remaining milk in here. Look at how just, it just sloshes around because there's no air in it. And we can also see, right? Look at how much more wiggly this milk is compared to here because this has a lot more air in it. And then, you know, this was our other milk. You can see how there's air that's stuck inside there. Doesn't really have the same thing here where we see like milk is not really just sticking onto the sides there because it's a lot thinner. So if we also look on the side here, we can see, well, maybe because I didn't pour enough, but we can see that the milk is just a lot thinner or it's just sitting at the top. So the point that we want to do now with, I, I'm using my better picture for all of this, but what we want to do is we want to do the exact same technique but we want to get a middle ground between the two here. And what that will look like is instead of introducing all this air at the beginning, or actually what we want to do is introduce the air at the beginning. So like, imagine this is your cup. We want to introduce air at the beginning or in the pitcher, in the milk, and we want this air layer or bubbles to be distributed through uh, the entire, entire pitcher. So that's like kind of my, uh, analogy or quick explanation for all of this. So let's do this here. Same technique. This is what worked for me. Pull, wand out, push to the right, tilt out like so. That might be a little too much actually, but it depends on what types of pitcher you're using, but we want to get away from hitting anything here. And watch this, same exact angle, right? I'm using different pitchers, but exact same angle. Let's try to do a good job here. Okay, that prob I probably could have gone lower, but I'm just going to see, hopefully try to get all of this milk incorporated in. I definitely didn't um, 
introduce as much air at the beginning as my other two ones. So we'll see what happens. But I do think this is going to work out. As we see, those bigger bubbles are now getting smashed up and distributed through the milk. Okay, this is about hot enough. So I think I didn't do a very good job, uh, as I would have liked to, to, uh, to show you guys what is happening here. But now we can see that this milk is not as thin as that one, as our earlier pour. And we can see that this seems to be about the middle ground between the two. And I'm going to see if I can uh, get some good latte art with this. Oops, yeah, maybe, maybe fill it up just a little more. So I'm not the best, but we're trying to showcase this. Okay, so as you see, this particular foam is less than, this was our thin example, but I think the thin example just didn't, the air just never in, actually incorporated through the milk. So that's why I guess what I can do is watch this, let's take a spoon. So, uh, this is like, I think our best one. This is a thin example and this is a thick example. So uh, let's look at the thick, too much air example first. Look at this. This is too obviously too much air, right? Okay, and then let's lick that off. <laughs> too thin milk, look at this. Look at how the, the, it's just instantly becomes watery. Just like that, right after we we move the foam aside. So I kind of want a middle ground between this one and this one. And hopefully we're going to find that out right now. There we go. This is a bit better. It's not as watery as the other one, and it's not as foamy. It's not as, it's not as watery as the thin milk, and it's as, as our too little air example, and it's definitely not as thick as our total crazy, let's add a ton of air into it, as we see here. When I push back against here, you see that there's just a little bit of surface tension on the milk there, right? If I do the same here, although this one isn't fully, uh, you know, I didn't fill it up as much, you'll see that it just wants to go out. Um, you'll see like how much more watery that is there. Do the same with here. You can actually, might be able, even able to hear that the air in there. and. What I wanted to highlight at the beginning was when I add too much air, you can see now, look how big those bubbles are. Look at how small the bubbles are here because they never got to incorporate throughout the milk, right? Too much. This one is kind of a weird example because I just didn't pour, fill it up enough. Usually the layer of milk is gonna be thinner. And then here I feel like is about right for this size of, of drink. And as we see, Right? This looks so much better than the other two, right? We see that there's surface tension from, from the milk that's getting onto the edges like there, and there isn't that with this, and there's too much of it with this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do uh, is actually showcase to you the S-Pro Toroid 2. Okay, so I've set, I'm gonna set all these guys aside. We had to do a quick cut because I uh, wanted to make sure my GoPro didn't die. So the Toroid 2, um, you know how I was talking about you gotta, or how I suggest you gotta pull the steam wand out, push to the right, and maybe pull out just a little. You don't need to do that with this guy. This is one of those pictures with the dimple on the bottom here. Um, and all you have to do with this picture is keep everything straight. Maybe just pull it out here. You don't have to fiddle with figuring out the right angle, of the picture, right? Like we don't have to do this. We don't have to do this. Um, and as you see, actually, I'll show you here. Watch this. We're doing. We're keeping the exact same angle with all of our pictures, right? And this is the angle that I've found to to give really good roll, right? This stays the same. Don't touch this. Leave this here. What you want to do is lift up using your left hand like so. And you can just push up against here 
I'm pushing up against the, the screw pad handle here, and all I'm doing is I'm lifting the pitcher up with my left hand. Like, I'm tilting my hand like this. Now, uh, let's go back to the Toroi 2. This is complicated. Imagine, so what if, if this is too complicated for you? Then do this. The same amount of concepts apply with pitcher, with the distance of how, or how uh, deep you insert the wand, but all you have to do with the Toroi 2 is stick it in the middle, like so. Let me show you that. So I aerate, I'm aerating milk. Oh, I think I've had enough. I'm just gonna stick up. Same kind of concept applies, but I'm not so far out. I'm just kind of on the grip head handle. You don't even need to do this. Like all you have to do is dip in, dip out. Uh, you know, aerate, lift up. And uh, this is gonna work perfectly fine. We see that the roll is not circular. It's kind of weird, but the bubbles are getting actually smashed up and I can move it back here to incorporate more. I can move it forward, right? There's like, it's just so simple. It's just stick it up and down. And then I've definitely, I think, aerated too much with this uh, because it's been a while since I've used this particular pitcher. Um, but look at that, right? This is passable, passable, definitely. And uh, maybe we can pour some latte art with this. I've definitely added too much air in this particular example. But, uh... Maybe what you have to do, or actually what you have, what you should do, is do the amount of air for the good one, which was this here. Air rate less, and then this would have worked out. But this is also another good example of adding too much air, which I think is probably the biggest struggle of many of you guys. So look at how grainy this is here, right? Let's take this guy out. Um, so look at that. Look how much air that is in there. Too much air. This is the problem a lot of you guys are having. So wanted to highlight that uh, again with the toroid. But the toroid eliminates the angles, where what angle you want to do. But to be fair, once you have figured out that all you have to do is pull this out, push to the right angle out like that, you are actually only lifting up and down, which is the same thing on the toroid. So to wrap up, let's look at all of our milk again, because now it's all sort of settled. And let me see if I can remember. This here was our too, uh, I think our too much air example. As you see now, bubbles are forming. The layer of milk is more. And, you know, it's pretty grainy. We go here. Uh, thin milk. The milk is only sitting on the top. Look at how watery that is. <clears throat> and then let's go and look at our final drink, which was kind of in the middle of these two. Which is... The milk, the air is more evenly incorporated into the actual drink. We see that we have our nice foam on the top for that good mouthfeel, but we also see that there's still a bit of surface tension from the milk. And then, finally, another example of too much air. Or actually just not incorporated air, maybe both. Look at that, how it just sticks at the top. So. I hope this was helpful. You know, I'm not an expert at this, but I'll sh I've just sort of found out a technique that's worked for me and I hope it works for you. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions or you need any sort of help. I'm in the diaspora, I'm on the Discord. Uh, feel free to message.